Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dota Underlords podcast, episode eight. Now, every other Friday, Suns fan here with the great swim, with the great Zeno. How are you fellows doing this great evening on the other Friday? It's a lot of greats. Not bad. I'm all right. Just chilling. That's great to hear. So, this will probably get you in a little bit better of a mood here. I'm going to read off a couple uh, reviews great that we reviews. got last week. Absolutely. Aww. First one is from Matt Damon, who says, Thank you, Suns fan. I win every game because of Aegis. And then a few minutes later, <laughs> apparently somebody else posted a five-star review saying, Thank you, Swim. Wish we could kill the Aegis debate, but it keeps coming back. I win every game because of Chainmail. So, sounds like the community is quite split as well on this. <laughs> kind of sad that guy didn't make like a new account and just call it Ben Affleck <laughs> so we could have like the full, I know. Uh, full yeah. back and forth. But that is true. Oh, well. So... I have a theory, and I want, I've talked about this with, with uh, Z, I was going to say with Suns fan. That would be weird, but with Zeno, uh, mm-hmm. because I got Lord recently, Swim. We haven't even talked since then. And no, have I literally would not have gotten it several times, like in terms of top three placements, if it wasn't <sighs> for Aegis. Now, here's the thing, though. This is what I've come to realize. I think it's more, it's less about whether the item is good or bad, and more about if it fits your play style. Because the way that I play, it really fits it to the point because I'm getting like I become very greedy towards the end of the game. And if I didn't have Aegis and I play like that, I would get like eighth place every single time. You know what I mean? So I think it's more personal preference than it is good versus bad. Does that make any sense to you? Do you agree at all? No. Okay. I mean, if so, if, if you pick an item that gives you more than 15 health, then you'll have more than 15 health and you can greed even further, right? Yeah, but how can you quantify it? What gives you 15 It's like listening to our exact conversation over and over again. I can guarantee you, chainmail on two or three will give you more than 15 health. Just Eh. buy one and track it. One chainmail will get you 15 health by the end of the game. That's what you're saying. Buy buy one and track what it does in fights. I'm hoping you're you're remembering our conversation about this exact topic and that this went literally the exact same way. I'm pretty sure I'll let the exact same health totals brought up as well. So... <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're gonna have to. This right, isn't your audience. Fine. If you're gonna make the ages fly, I, I mean, you are I, lord now, and I'm not. So there you are. Yeah, Wait, but, you're not lord, Zeno. No, I'm Zeno. Garbage. You're a lower rank than Suns fan. I am. Well, you have I'm no also... idea, actually, how much shame that brought me for a brief Zeno. moment in time. Zeno. In my defense, in my defense, it's been very busy. <laughs> I, I we just bought a house, so uh, it's been busy times. But. I popped back on the bandwagon. I lost like four games in a row, but I've been playing a bunch. <laughs> slowly climbing back up. Got got a first place right before this podcast. So give it give it. Um, okay. Next podcast, I will be Lord. That is my. Uh, I I'll, I will I'll say I, I have played a lot more than Zeno Swim, and that's true. I okay. This is what happened. I'll just tell this story and then we can move on. I was stuck at like Big Boss three slash Big Boss four for over a month like the we play tournament that's so far back i was like big boss four back then then every time these big patches come i have to relearn everything because this is a new genre for me so i don't pick it up as easily as other people right so finally like a couple weeks ago i get big boss five and i'm stuck there for like 10 days and i have to tell you it's the most frustrating time i've ever had playing it's not like it's the game it's more i'm frustrated myself because i'm making stupid mistakes and i'm Mm-hmm. veering away from things that I'm more comfortable with and I just realized a few things and Nikki helped me with this don't rage you have to be very positive swim so I was very positive I wasn't raging and I just picked strats that I was comfortable with and less so what like worrying less about what other people were playing you know and the the other thing that helped me a lot was I would always get really ragey at the beginning of the game when I was like big boss 4 and I'd have the entire list everyone is lord and then me as big boss 4 I realized that a lot of these lords are actually garbage. Honestly, right. they're really bad. <laughs> so I, I started to realize that pretty quick, and it, it did help me uh, in my games. So, so you're saying positivity is the the key to success? Is, I had a positive outlook. Here, so that, yeah. All right. Wow. So before we get into this week's update and future things to come, did you guys want to talk about the current meta at all? Because uh, I know we got oh, a couple absolutely. people that were wanting us to talk about that. So please. Oh, I'm I'm absolutely down. You know, I'm I'm a big meta discusser. Uh, I'm curious since obviously you know we, we we do these like after patches. We had a pretty big patch yesterday. It didn't end up changing uh, very much in terms of like amount of lines, but I think it's a really big meta shift. The transfer from four cost odds into three cost odds uh, effectively 
nerfs good stuff down probably an entire tier and all the actual like role value builds these being like the three star builds feel back again so it's a good uh, meta diversity honestly the game's a hello did you uh, you just broke up horribly for me blue oh, that's that's really blue strange you blew bit. out your mic temporarily <laughs> continue please swim that's well what 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 did what did we I miss? feel like that was like right at the final like the apex of this whole thing. It's I was like, I was just saying everything the meta, was coming to a head. The met, the meta's in a in a good state right now, uh, yeah. basically. It almost feels like a merger, right? Of like this uh, right before this last patch you you had good stuff and then you know before that you kind of had uh you know get to seven or eight roll for, for three stars and all that. And now they're kind of both viable. Yeah. Uh, more so than before. So, as you said, like you have so many different branches or directions you can go now. That at least I've only played a few games on this this last patch, but it seems like there's a lot of viable options right now. Yeah, Very I healthy. had personally. This is I don't know how far different this is from your level swim, but I'm going to tell you what I played. I started spamming like three strats to get to Lord. Okay, so. Like the one I didn't want to play, but sometimes I just did it because it was all the units were coming to me is just knights. I mean, I think that's pretty. I know there's like somebody in the top 20 that literally only plays knights. I don't know how that's possible, but that is a thing. Second was Primordial Mage. I was spamming that a lot. And then the number one strat I was having success with was Scrappy Assassin. That strat, and you could substitute Assassin for Mage if it just makes more sense that game. But they felt really strong. What do you think about Scrappies right now? At your level. They're okay. So for the past three weeks, the meta has been dominated by a tier zero strategy called good stuff, which is three warrior, four warlock, two troll, two shaman, two scaled effectively playing for like an early win streak. Basically like every top Lord player has agreed the strategy outranks all of the others by a really wide margin. Um, and that's basically like what we're talking about. That's gotten nerfed. So now suddenly these other strategies that felt like they were all just like tier two compared to like good stuff feel like they're coming back up again. Scrappies is something I actually need to try a bit more. Uh, they're doing pretty well right now. Like the Scrappy Ace, like the Techies Ace is starting to shine. Ooh, um, I think they're probably going to be tier two. Not super high good. Not super high good. Not super top tier, but pretty good. Yeah, I, when we first talked about the Ace, the Techies Ace introduction of Chain Reaction, we thought it was like, eh, it could be okay. Maybe it's a little bit overrated just because it sounds really good. It's fucking really good. I think it's... Game changing. That's one of those I'm like still top with Zeno on this one. Really? Uh, here, here's one thing I'll say in your favor. Um, I'm not a big fan of the the zombie tower. I can't think of exactly what it's called. It Tombstone. Feels, Tombstone see, it feels really really good. Uh, one thing it's not really good against is uh, Scrappies with Techies. I, I went this my last game uh, just before we played, and man. If one of those zombies dies, like that chain reaction literally annihilates your entire board within like the radius of the tombstone. It is actually crazy. But other than that, I don't know. It's not very exciting for me. But I mean, I think Disruptor is still the best ace, I want to say. Enigma got a lot of changes. Um, but in terms of like the ace effect, isn't is Troll the worst one? The mini stone? Troll was Troll has been very, very good for the past few weeks. Uh, but just the ace it effect. had a combination with no, 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 the Ace Effect. The Ace Effect oh. has been part of the Good Stuff build for the past really? two weeks because when they changed Enigma so that Enigma was draining mana on stunned units, the Troll Mini Bash would happen before mm -hmm. the stun or before the mana drain check. So every mm -hmm. attack that was mini bashing would drain mana. And it was super powerful. But now that they nerfed Enigma, that's one of the big things in this update, Enigma's Ace Effect got almost eliminated. Um, suddenly Troll has kind of like lost his partner, right? Yeah, let, let's just briefly go over what they actually changed. Um, you talked sure. about the Tier 4 units being changed from uh, reducing the chance by 5% at level 6 through 8, so that changes the the good stuff strat that you're talking about quite a bit. Uh -huh. um, Arc Warden was slightly nerfed. But yeah, the Ace Effect for Enigma. So now prevents gain, gaining mana from attacks when hexed, silenced, stunned, instead of draining it. How good was it before? It, it felt like it was Extreme. just when it went off, it's just you just went, right? You run it in every in every like every late game board should be running Enigma plus Troll or it loses and that's like that's how it's been for the past two weeks. But 
Now it's really bad. The biggest difference is now suddenly <laughs> it's not just all damage. It's only auto attack damage. So stuff like Tidehunter's Ravage won't be even draining mana. Like that damage will still charge mana because it's not auto attack damage. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. And like another way to look at it too is like that Enigma um, Ace ability was basically like a buff to so many good units on the board with like suns and hexes and stuff like that, that it synergized with so much good stuff in such a good way before that now that now that it's nerfed, it's it's almost like a nerf across the board to all those different things. So it's not just like, oh, we've nerfed Enigma. It's like, oh, now we've nerfed, uh, you know, going crazy with like human synergy and all these different things like that. So uh, it is a pretty big shift. Uh, going over some of the other changes that were applied. This is, I don't think it's an actual change. This is just worded, right? For the ace effect for Disruptor, the effect of the Warlock Alliance is now applied to one target per alliance level. That's how it was before, right? No. So how it works now, it used to be that if you have the Disruptor ace, it means that you have a pair of lifelinks. Your Warlock lifelinks to two units when it casts. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have four Warlocks, it's the same because tier two Warlock means you're getting two lifelinks. But if you only have a pair of Warlocks or two or three Warlocks, the Disruptor Ace doesn't activate at all. It's still one lifelink. And if you have six Warlocks or tier three, you're lifelinking to three units instead of two. Oh, so it's basically a nerf to pair and a buff to six of. But okay. four, four Warlocks is the same. That's true. Okay, so two Warlocks is... this. So this is a direct nerf for two, which a lot of cases, a lot of people would end up with two Warlocks just as a throw-in because it was so powerful. Right. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And then also the Warlock Alliance was changed in terms of the healing from 50, 80, 130 to 50, 70, 100. So direct nerf there. And then Assassin Alliance on critical strike, Assassins wound the target, reducing healing done by 50% or 100%, depending on how many Assassins you have. This was bugged to where they wouldn't crit at all. <laughs> uh, I think they fixed it, though. Have you seen this in effect, though? I don't know if it's even noticeable. With three assassins, especially. Uh, yeah, it probably doesn't change much at all. Uh, I think three assassins is definitely the way you want to play assassins if you're playing assassins. Six has probably never been worse right now. Um, but I mean, it does actually make a little bit of a difference. It makes three assassins a little bit better. That's not technically true. Six assassins was worse before this patch swim because they couldn't stop. Uh, <laughs> it depends how you look at it. God damn I, I would say there's. I would say it's worse right now. With a with a buff, technically, it's worse. Yeah, so this, this is something I was explaining to my stream a little bit earlier, which is very counterintuitive. Basically, if you look two weeks ago, three assassins got buffed big by 50% DPS, and six assassins got buffed by 25% DPS. And these two builds are kind of in direct competition with one another. Like, you always have to choose between one or the other. So three assassins getting buffed by even more means there's less reason than ever to go six assassins. Hmm. But yeah, the number on it is higher, but... There's just no reason to do it. Here's here's my one question for you, and I really haven't thought this out very much. But you know, with with things like four lock four warlocks being more viable, um, and pretty common in like a lot of late game builds, um, mm -hmm. and with six assassins, you're you're hopefully distributing those hits, you know, maybe to three or four units, like we'll just say. Um, the the minus hundred percent heal. Because like 50% heal against Warlocks doesn't matter half the time because they do so much damage in a burst. Like every once in a while, you're just getting full health or a lot of health really fast. But is that 100% actually okay? Or is it just not good enough to ever run six assassins, basically? Is that, I is that the conclusion think, we're coming to? I, I think it doesn't help six assassins case at all. Okay. Um, so what I want to talk about which will take up the bulk of this episode, is this quote-unquote big update that's going to be coming out in mid-October. So, or I said the first half of October, there will be the big update coming, which they've been working out for quite a while. So it's going to come with two playable underlords, which we have yet to see any of, and exactly what they do. Uh, duos team mode, six new heroes, three new alliances, and an updated UI. That's a lot of shit. Let's go through yeah. each one briefly and theory craft if you guys want to have some fun with this. Well, the two playable underlords, I don't. I, can we talk about that? I don't know anything about it, so we can just. I feel like we've already guessed around one. that last time. Well, uh, well, the there was a screenshot, right? Oh, Anessix. Yeah. What is that? It, so 
you can pick an underlord. It's on the screen. They changed the uh, the splash screen, as it were, the dashboard. And it's underneath Anessix. It says Turf Control 20 out of 36. 28 out of 36. What the hell does that mean? Turf Control? Oh, are they going to like have terrain modifiers? That'd be amazing. Um... Swim, do you have any idea what this means? That'll be my I know, guess. Why I not? know there's a, there's a dog barking in the background, there. so Swim is <laughs> trying to buy as much time as possible. But she does look pretty sick. She looks like... Um, Oh, that's a cape that she's wearing, isn't it? What is that around her shoulders? It's not wings. At first, I was like, she's kind of quap-like. She has the horns, but not quite a succubus. Uh, looks like a cool character, though. Looking forward to see what exactly the Underlords actually do. So let's move on to the six new heroes, Zeno, as Swim has exited the podcast temporarily. <laughs> yeah, we always got to kick someone off. Yeah, during Who? our podcast. <laughs> Who do you want to see? See a couple buddy? episodes. Ago. Let's get let's get uh, a list here. As far as heroes, yeah. Um. Oh man, Puppet Master. That's for sure. Wow, Puppet. No. I would uh, love to see Puppet Master. Don't get me wrong, but oh, something man. tells me that's, that's a not good happening. question. And I don't want to just go and list like all my the heroes I play from Dota one because it's a very small list right now. But I'm trying to think of like what would be fun for adapting how the game's actually played how about io and you guys like the idea of io from uh, auto chess um just have like a wild card yeah a wild card that costs five but doesn't have the same rarities as the ace units that yeah. combine I, mean, I always like that you. generally speaking i thought that was a really good addition to the game um i'm wondering how that would fit into the current Underlords meta, but I wouldn't mind seeing something like that. Like something like a, like a Phoenix or something like that. You could probably do some fun things. Um, Ooh, where it turns into an egg and you have to kill the egg. Mm. Uh, either like the egg or like the, um, oh no, this is going to really show the my dive. current Dota knowledge. The, uh, no, the laser beam type thing. Uh, laser I feel like Sunray. Sunray, there we go. Uh, like I feel like positioning stuff like that would be kind of fun um i mean come on you can't put phoenix in without doing the egg that's like that's such a cool idea uh, all right um you know things like where you're you're buffing other units like uh you know magnus you could do like empower like different stuff like that um yeah so maybe some like different dynamics for like making positioning more important for um you know buffing and debuffing units i think would be pretty cool Swim, any heroes that come to mind for Rubik. you? Rubik. Rubik, uh, yeah. if there was some, I'm not right. sure how spell steel could be implemented into the game, but I think it's a, it's a really cool idea. What if they put Rubik in and it was just Fade Bolt? I'd be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> is there a point in putting him in if you're just going to put Fade Bolt is the question. No, it's just like just nah. one, one random ability. I mean, it's just a generic zap pretty much. I would personally love to see Pangolier. Uh, you could do a cool thing with Swashbuckle, like items like Maelstrom become like God tier, or you can just do the Rolling Thunder, just turn into a fucking ball. That would be sick. Um, the other ones, yeah, Heart Piercer or whatever it's called now, not so much. Shield Crash, not so much. Although that one, Shield Crash could work in this game as well. Yeah, there's a lot of cool heroes that they can do stuff with. I'm very interested to see what they actually end up doing. Um, Is there a hero that you absolutely hate playing but you would love to see in underlords there's a lot of heroes i don't like to play i mean i'll just go not, to the not just because of like section. difficulty but like heroes that you can play but you hate playing that i can play i mean i can play any hero xeno mm -hmm. i've seen you play uh, support i would put like this is fits my play style but bat bat, oh, bat riders in the game already ancient apparition um like the stopping healing completely with ice blast but mm -hmm. that's a hero I don't like to play in Dota, but it could be a cool concept in in Underlords. I've got one. Give it, it was, to me. Uh, did you guys see the uh, the Reddit post about Invoker potentially getting added? That would be or cool. Like an no. idea. So uh, the Reddit post, and you know, credit to I don't know the, the poster. <laughs> this is not my idea. Yep. This is not my idea, but I think it's really cool. The idea is he's some random two cost unit. So there's thirty of each two cost in the pool, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with Invoker, there would be 10 different ones. There's, or sorry, three different ones. There's 10 uh, Quas Invokers, 10 uh. Expert Invokers, and 10 Wex Enforcers. 
or invokers. Yeah. And then when you level them to level two, they get the spell based on what combination you use, right? That would be, so the level two invoker really cool. gets that combination, gets that spell. Um, and then there was a thing where like the level three invoker would be able to cast like, you know, uh, all three of the spells that were like used to create him or something like that. There's, there's different ways of doing that. But I think that's a really cool idea. I actually love that idea. So here's the thing. Amazing idea. That puts the... I feel like that makes it so much harder for casuals. Like that is a very difficult concept <laughs> to master. Like Invoker himself yeah. is... Like he's crazy. If you guys don't know, he has... How many spells? It's like... Uh, Ten. 10 not including like his quest like his uh invoke and whatever but yeah. that hero is absurd like the ideas you can come up with is really cool like rubik is a similar idea it's not on the same level obviously but like how do you do spell steal i don't know the first hero that casts something and then when you have enough mana you steal it that very rng but it could work like that could have some big yeah. effects um or it could be like the closest enemy or something to allow for like positional or there's a few ways to do it frontline rubik is what you're saying <laughs> I mean, who knows? Who knows? That's cool. I mean, I think there's more of the code in place to do something like that with Rubik than there would be to do the Invoker thing. Like, mm, the sure. Rubik thing at least seems feasible, right? Like, that doesn't seem too hard to implement. Here, I would not like to see is Meepo because Arc Warden's in the game, and that's basically Meepo in in Auto Chess, isn't it? In Underlords, just getting a clone of yourself doesn't sound like yeah. that would be fun at all. Phantom Lancer, kind of same idea. Um, yeah, th there's a lot of cool ones, and obviously they don't even have to keep the skills the same. Is there a? You think they're ever gonna add heroes that just aren't in Dota? I don't think so. I think they would always maybe artifact heroes. Artifact heroes, Sans fan. You couldn't have forgotten about those, could you have? You're breaking up. Did you say artifact? Yeah, artifact heroes. Sor Lacan. Yeah, Kana. Yeah. Prelix. I would love to see it. Whatever else is an artifact, Rix. <laughs> No, no, mm. not Rix. Mm. <laughs> Never Rix, please. I'm begging. I kinda you. feel like they're gonna they're gonna want to distance this game from maybe the the artifact uh, beginnings. It's just a hero. A it's not a big. I one. mean, yeah, it's just the heroes, you know. They, yeah. you know, they already they no, have we'll the design. See. They have the art. All right, so they're coming out with six new heroes during this update. They're coming out with three new alliances. Does this does this mean that they're gonna be taking stuff out? You think, or are they just literally? Yeah adding stuff on top oh sorry uh so what this means with six new heroes and three new alliances it, obviously they can't just have those heroes be the new alliances i think that this is a pretty clear indication that they're going to be repurposing heroes that are already in the game as part of like these new alliances they're adding mm -hmm. like for example there was a reddit suggestion that they could have like this crawler alliance for broodmother weaver nix and sand king and in that mm -hmm. case like they just make sand king who's already in the game a different alliance would they add it as a third alliance for him, or would he would it replace the second alliance that he has? It would probably replace like Savage, but honestly, that's kind of up to them. It's probably a case by case basis. Do you think that makes it too complicated? Because the way that I was thinking about it, and I was fine. Like again, I always look at like the the casual perspective. Because let's it, let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. This is a casual game at its base. Um, yeah. If you're bringing in new heroes, I just assume that they would get rid of certain heroes temporarily out of the pool. Instead of changing well, the things plan within the season, heroes, right? well, in theory, yes. But if he, he's talking about changing alliances of heroes already, just to fit, uh, like I can see you adding like a third alliance to Sand King, but getting rid of like Savage after all this time is there's a certain point because they're coming out with season one soon. I think they're going to stop doing like crazy updates. Is my assumption? Yeah, because it feels like a little too much for the casual to kind of keep track of. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Right, but th th like this seems like the time where they're going to try and make as many like wholesale changes as they True. can in preparation for that, right? Um, so if, if they they feel like they need to tweak um, alliances, like now is the time to do it, not not later. Um, is there any? So I, I do think we might see something like that. Is there any alliance idea that you guys have that would be cool? Is there anything like that they're missing mechanic wise from Dota that they could bring over as an alliance idea? Um, so I'm not sure about alliances and maybe Zeno can answer your question in regards to alliances. Yeah, you're right, I'm talking what? again. Oh, that's weird. Sorry. Yeah. I don't, uh, I spent a lot I, of time. I can actually hear him. Anyway, oh. sorry. Let's... I spent a lot of time theory crafting what the underlords could and should do. And I think probably the best thing is to have certain underlords that you can kind of pick from the beginning. Like one underlord could enable like a sort of more draft style play style. 
and another could be more for constructed. So mm -hmm. like, for example, the constructed sort of type underlord is more geared around towards rerolls um, or something like that, like being able to make it more likely to find what you're looking for. Some people have suggested like increased probability based on how many you have the unit. If the numbers are low enough, that kind of thing is fine. Uh, whereas like a drafter type style underlord would maybe allow you to uh, give you a bonus if you had like less amounts of alliances or it could um, possibly do something like change a unit's alliance, like that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. One interesting thing about the underlords is we do know they're going to have like, uh, we did a bit of data mining and there is going to be some kind of like talent tree system. So you are going to be able to somewhat customize what they do individually. Oh, Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Do you know what the turf control means? No, I assume that's part of the city crawl feature. It's like your per, your progress during crawl or something like that. But yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. So let well, let's finish this, and then we'll talk about the final update, as it were. Um, duo team mode. How do you guys think this would work? So you you team up with somebody. This would, I'm pretty sure I read that this is not the same as turbo mode. Is that correct? Yes. Turbo mode will be a later thing that they're trying to like experiment with, and they just don't want to make yeah. it like a shorter version of Underlord, so they're going to make it more uh, unique, I guess you could say. So what do you guys have envisioned for Duo mode? So Duo mode in uh, the Drota version of Auto Chess is effectively, to my knowledge, it's basically like you're both playing with different health pools, different banks, uh, different boards, but what you are sharing is a bench. Right. Mm. So you kind of have one big shared bench and you can kind of pass units to each other effectively given that. Ah. So <laughs> the idea is you want to kind of like go for different builds that two different builds that use none of the same units, mm. um, which is interesting. But furthermore, I think it could lead to even a bit of like a support carry kind of dynamic, which I think would be really cool if something like that emerged. And do you both huh. then like do you go battle independent uh, single uh, opponents or is it like a big giant uh, 8 by 16 board or how does that work i assume the battles would be independent but honestly i mean there's there's definitely room for underlord interesting ways of making this work hmm. um yeah and that's that's all up in the air hmm. that would be very cool i like that idea a lot is that from Reddit? It was like a unique idea swim no no, no. That's so that's that's basically itself? how it worked in auto chess yeah okay. more or less and I think there's like a, a lot somewhere. of cool things they can do. And like, honestly, I was even thinking about this, like um, playing this game, like with another person in partnership is like a very different experience. Like it's almost like a co-op sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of opens it up to people, you know, not, not only just being able to enjoy the game more and more of like a fun, casual environment, but like it, it enables you to kind of bring in your friends and play with them uh, in a little bit more of a direct manner. Uh, where you're not in competition, but you're kind of like trying to help them out a little bit and sort of you're able to walk people through the ropes like while you're playing with them. So I think from that aspect, too, it's like a it seems like a fun way to get people involved in the game. So I, yeah. I'm really excited about it. I think there's a legitimate chance this could actually be like almost as popular as single player. Oh, I agree. I was for sure. And that's the same thing. That would be that would be big. That's the main thing missing from this game is the social aspect because it's it's a free for all yeah. one versus seven, you know? So mm -hmm. I could definitely see that, like you're saying. Uh, they also said they're going to be updating the UI, which whatever that means. Uh, but I think, <laughs> uh, do you guys have an issue with the AI? The only, or the UI, the only thing I have an issue with is still like the gold and levels and everything is just so far apart. Other than that, I'm pretty used to everything. I feel like nothing, like what can they improve on for the PC? I assume this is for PC, not for mobile. I think yeah, it might be a full reskin of everything, I would assume. But I do agree with you. Like the one thing that's really been, I don't want to say an issue, but something that's not great for me is you do kind of have to like uh, pan your eyes around all the corners to get all the data you want when yeah. they could very easily just plop it all in one place. So love to see that. But other than that, I'm fine with it as it is. And then soon after this, that update is coming uh, first half of October. And then soon afterwards, they will be launching the official version one of the game. The game will be officially released um, out of beta. They will also come with two more Underlords, a new Battle Pass. Season one will begin officially, which, by the way, do we know how they're going to be doing uh, like the rank system? Meaning, Lords, where am I going to end up, Swim? Am I going to be back from the beginning or is it like back to Big Boss 1? There's Maybe a good chance idea, that they'll... What would, you what would you think they would do? 
I would I would guess it will kind of seed you. So yeah, you'll probably start at like big boss one or something like that. Okay. I think that's, that's like uh, most games are doing that kind of. Yeah. And what is city crawl? I have no idea what this is. Have they talked about this at all? Uh, so I don't think they've said explicitly what it is. Uh, people have been kind of putting our heads together and <laughs> I think the best guess is that it'll be some kind of like single player, maybe even roguelike-ish campaign. Uh, like for example, you know, Hearthstone did their kobolds and catacombs, which was sort of like Slay the Spire, like a sort of like single player, like draft builder. You like, you edit your thing while you play opponents and that just kind of continues for a run. And that mm. seems to be what a lot of people are guessing it is. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool. Like a nice single player campaign with a, some storyline yeah. with a lot of lore that we maybe haven't visited because like a lot of these under, none of these underlords are Dota heroes at all, right? And they have yeah. the, the option to bring an artifact lore into it as well. If they want, I know a lot of people are offended by that, but I got some good am I Am I mistaken or wasn't Anna An Six or whatever her name is part of some artifact lore peripherally? I thought she was in like an artifact comic or something. It's possible. I'm not the right person to ask, though. Uh, Slacks <laughs> is the one that, that reads it and remembers. I don't remember yeah. any of these other than Sorlacon at this point. Let's hope to God she gets without in. Slacks. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, that's all the topics I have. Do you guys want to talk about anything else? Any uh, any Underlords wish lists to come? Uh, I'll, I'll throw one out there since uh, I've been casually bring it up like like when we're getting into the loads and stuff i would really love to see um i don't know if any of you guys are dorky enough to have played like D D or anything like that no nope. point but you know you, you have like different terrains like different things that are hard to move through like i would love to see some sort of terrain modification in this game like be able to to make like certain squares like difficult so you know units like take a long longer time to pass through them or they get like a mischance for a little bit or something like that um, and then I, I do agree with swim. Like, I feel like there's a lot of cool things you could do with how you manage the, you know, the economy and the probabilities in the game to kind of make it a little bit more fun with the underlords. Like I would love to see, like, you can even have like underlords that just like rotate through like, Oh, you know, you have a higher chance of finding, uh, warriors and then hunters and then assassins. And it just kind of cycles through. So you're like inclined to roll during certain, you know, uh, uh, cycles and not not during other ones but like i feel like there's so many like interesting things they could do with it i i again i really just hope that it's not too it doesn't predispose people too much towards certain builds i guess that would be my one one concern but mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of fun stuff they can do swim wish list my friend uh i just hope that's you know the they, they put in the Underlords in a good way. I think that's just going to be it, like the kind of make it or break it moment for this game. And it's like future. It's like if Underlords are done right, then then we could we could be a very, very popular and successful game. You know, I hope they come out with Underlord the Hero at the same time to make it really awkward for everyone. Yeah, they we'll talk have to call him Mr. Underlord. <laughs> yes, Mr. Underlord. <laughs> he has to have a top hat and everything. Uh, I think yeah. the one thing, and this is not quite piggybacking off of Xeno, but it does remind me, you're talking about terrain modification. I want the Hearthstone, this is the one thing. It's so stupid from Hearthstone. I need it. Just click on stuff and have it do yeah. something. That, uh, it, yeah. Like doodads or whatever, anything. Just let me click on the map. Have some interaction. Like it like it doesn't even have to be a mini game, you know? Although mm -hmm. Hearthstone kind of is like a mini game. Like anything, please. Like I'm begging you. you. Know, Hearthstone, Hearthstone had some intense ones. You like farm like golden carrots and shit. <laughs> like a one in five thousand chance or some kind of nonsense. Like <laughs> yeah, people you, were posting screenshots on the subreddit of like three golden carrots. Like, yeah, they dude, have a lot Hearthstone of cool hard. Yeah, I would like something yeah. like that. Honestly, they need like the equivalent of like a fidget spinner built into the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's going to be their top priority after watching this. Of course, uh, they're going to forget about that big update and just focus on the doodads and whatnot. So. Uh, with that, I believe this comes to an end. Episode 8. God, did I get that right? Holy shit. Episode 8 of the Dota Underlords podcast. You find us on Dota Cinema. You find it live on S Swim's Twitch. And <laughs> sunsfan.gg slash podcast for the audio versions. Until next time, Sunsfan, Zeno, and Swim signing out. Goodbye, friends.